So an espresso machine has become extremely popular. They're some of the most popular coffee makers on the market. But how does it really compare to a regular espresso machine like a Breville? Well, today we're going to compare the Nespresso Virtuo Plus against the Breville Barista Pro, and I'll explain exactly how they work and how they taste and which one I tend to use. So to start, they're actually very different machines. So an espresso, it's a pod machine, so you get the prepackaged capsules of coffee. And on top of that, this espresso Virtuo brews very different than just about any coffee maker on the market. So it brews by you put the pod in, and then it puts water into the pod and actually spins the pod to brew the coffee. That centrifugal force is actually what brews the coffee and forces the coffee out the sides of the pod and into your cup. Now, meanwhile, a Breville espresso machine or any regular espresso machine brews using high pressure. Nine bars of pressure is a standard, which is about 150 pounds per square inch. We're talking about a lot of force through that portafilter, the coffee puck. Now, that combination of high pressure, hot water, and finely ground coffee creates that concentrated beverage that we know as espresso. Now, using both of these is also very different. The espresso is pretty foolproof with only one button on the top and prepackaged capsules of coffee. Meanwhile, using a Breville or any semi automatic machine on the market is quite an involved workflow. You need to grind the coffee, prepare the puck, tamp it evenly, and put it in the brew head and make sure you're pulling out just the exact amount of espresso relative to the amount of coffee you're putting in. It's quite a fickle process. So now let's do a taste test using each machine. Now for the Nespresso, I've actually refilled an original pot with the same coffee I'm using the Breville machine. So this comparison will be strictly just the machine itself and not the beans. So I have two shots of the same coffee. It's going to both the taste. Okay, so there are probably two things that I notice. First, on the Nespresso, it has a much different texture. So it has a much thinner body to it, a lighter body, less mouthfeel to it. Also, it's a little more bitter and uh, a little more muted, a little more of a flat flavor profile. I mean, I should say balanced in one hand. But meanwhile, on the Breville Espresso Sean, it has that classic espresso taste. And by that, I mean bold and very pronounced. There's actually a good amount of acidity, good amount of uh, sweetness, and some bitterness in there. You can tell, actually, the body's a lot thicker because I'm just telling it to swirl the glass. You can see how much more is just sticking to the sides of it. Actually, the bags, so there are cherry cherry flavor notes on there, and I can, I can taste those cherry flavor notes here. So like I said, this is almost overpowering in one way, which a lot of people don't like initially, but to me, it's the acquired taste, and that's what makes espresso espresso. I mean, espresso, though, Espresso shot is still good. I said it's a little thinner. It's more of like a strong coffee. That's how I would describe it, rather than a true espresso shot. Aside from just how they brew, there are a couple other differences to know that explain this flavor profile. So first, an espresso uses less coffee. There are only 7 grams in the pot and about 40 grams of espresso out. Almost a 6 to 1 ratio. Meanwhile, in the Breville, I put 18 grams of coffee in, and this one's about 38 grams out. So not quite as much coffee, but a lot more ground coffee that went into it. It's almost a two to one ratio, which is the standard for espresso. Second, the Nespresso is ground a little more coarsely. So when I ground on the Breville for the espresso shot, it was a grind size of eight on this Breville Barista Pro. Meanwhile, to refill the pod at the same standard of the coffee going in, I use a grind size of 25 on the Breville. So more coarse coffee, which will limit your extraction and limit some of that, that flavor enhancement there. And the third thing is the Nespresso brews at a cooler temperature. So when I measured this temperature on different shots, it was consistently coming out at about 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Probably means the brew head is about 180 degrees. Meanwhile, on the espresso machine, like a Breville, it's very close to 200 degrees the entire time. Again, that cooler temperature will also probably limit the extraction and limit your flavor profile. And so the longer shot will definitely change your body and make it a thinner texture with less coffee in. And then that coarser grind and lower temperature for brewing will probably also lead to slightly different flavor profile. Now to be clear, I still like the Nespresso. Like I said, I consider it more of just a very strong coffee than I do a true espresso, but it's not quite that overpowering taste you get with the Breville espresso machine. Now one other thing to note on the coffees that come out of each of these is the Nespresso makes quite a large crema. Crema being that foam that comes on top of the shot. You can lift it up and it'll hold its shape on a spoon. You can see how it slides off in these thick globs 
will actually even stick to a spoon. And that doesn't necessarily contribute directly to taste, but it does create a lot more aroma when you have that big layer of foam and crumb on the top. And your sense of smell does contribute to your perceived sense of taste, so I do like that Nespresso has that. Now, one other thing too, what about making lattes with these machines? Well, here I actually do like the Nespresso more than the Breville. Well, I like the Breville for just a straight espresso because I like that pronounced flavor profile. The espresso, Nespresso pods tend to have a darker roasted coffee that cuts through milk really well. Now, on top of that, these espresso machines come with an Arachino milk frother. And the Arachino is just a simple one button press that will pour in the milk, press the button, and it will froth your milk and aerate it. And it's really easy to use. Meanwhile, on the Breville, you have the steam wand here. You have to manually froth the milk in a milk jug, and you can create a nice microphone with it. But anyone who watches this channel knows I am not good at steaming milk, and I'm not good at latte art, and so I actually like the Arachino and the automated milk frother the whole way. Now, what about the cost of the coffee and the cost of the machines? Well, Nespresso machines are definitely cheaper. They are under $200 typically, and so they're readily available and a lot less than the Breville Barista Pro, which is about $800 to $900 as of this filming. So you can save a lot of money up front by buying an espresso. But keep in mind, you do have to buy the Nespresso pods, and those pods are about $1.10 each these days. Meanwhile, I can buy a 12 ounce specialty bag of coffee beans for about $15 for a good quality coffee, and that'll probably give you 20 doses of espresso for about $0.75 cents per coffee versus the 110 here. Over a year at one coffee a day, you're saving about $125 by getting a Breville espresso machine. And keep in mind not only that, but you can use any coffee you want on the Breville. Now you can save some money with an espresso machine if you refill your pods like I did. And I'll make a future video on that, so make sure you subscribe to see that one. So which one of these do I prefer? Well, I should use them both. I like the taste of the espresso that comes from the Breville. But I like the convenience of an espresso. A lot of days I'm just in a hurry and want a quick coffee. And I think it really comes down to what you value. Do you want the best true espresso? In which case, I would recommend getting a Breville Barista Pro, which is a great semi-automatic machine. Or do you just want something that's quick and easy and still pretty good? In which case, I think the Nespresso Pro 2 Plus, which is the model I have here, is quite good. Now, both of these will be linked in the description below. And I'll be making more videos on this content. So make sure to subscribe to see those. And if you enjoyed this video, hit like as it really supports our future content.